some 500 kilometers north of Rio de Janeiro, deep within the Brazilian state of Minas Gerais, is a most remarkable place. Ouro Preto was discovered at the end of the 17th century by Portuguese gold prospectors. They found black gold, which changed color due to its iron content. So a prosperous gold town was born, with fascinating Baroque and Rococo architecture that has survived right up to the present day. This area was granted city status and as a capital city, consequently had much influence over the history of the region. In 1980, this colonial mining town was designated as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. The view from the central Praça Tiradentes reveals the full Baroque splendor of the colonial buildings. However, a number of tragic events once took place here. It was not only a place of considerable wealth. The seeds of Brazil's struggle for independence were planted here, as well as the abolition of slavery. Joaquim José de Silva Xavier was both a soldier and a dentist. As a tooth extractor, he was also the hero of the struggle against Portuguese rule. However, both he and his supporters were betrayed and taken prisoner. Tiradentes was hanged, drawn and quartered. As a warning to others, his head was placed here in the marketplace for all to see. The former wealth of the gold mine owners led to a blossoming of culture and a theater was built. The greatest artists of the time were invited to work here. Uro Preto was known far and wide. During the gold rush, the population grew to more than 80,000, and at the time, the town was larger than New York. At the zenith of its prosperity, the buildings were decorated with valuable materials, and the slaves were made to wear gold and diamond jewelry. The region's substantial mineral resources helped to create the magnificent buildings that can still be seen today. The Agreia de São Francisco de Assis was one such masterwork. Completed by the Franciscan Order in 1820, it's one of the most impressive Baroque churches in Latin America. In Ouro Preto, the architectural skill of one man was particularly striking, Antonio Francisco Lisboa. After having worked on various other religious buildings, the crippled artist worked here together with his father. Artist Manuel de Costa Ataida created the blue and red paintwork on the bound wooden coverings, an illusionistic masterwork. Likewise, the splendid high altar is a typical example of Barocco Miniero, and also the famous soapstone pulpit.
Sensitive, elegant, baroque, with lifelike, expressive figures, radiant and unassuming beauty. The Minas Gerais Gold Rush also influenced the economy of numerous countries in Europe. And Lisbon was flooded with gold coins that had been minted in Ouro Preto. Throughout the small town, unique and lavish Baroque churches were built. A grand total of notable number, 13. Good town planning was also a feature of the Brazil of colonial times. Although modest looking from the outside, another important religious building, the Igreja Nossa Senhora do Pila, was completed in 1733. This brought about a new development in the city's history. The Portuguese motherland became increasingly greedy and requested ever more gold. So the townsfolk began to hide their wealth from the crown's collectors and placed an increasing number of churches at their disposal. The plan worked and the interior of church buildings became increasingly ornate and valuable. This gave rise to one of the most richly adorned churches in Brazil. Francisco Xavier de Brito assisted with the wood carvings. Four hundred and thirty-four kilograms of gold dust was mixed into the decoration of the altar and carved artwork. Riches of both imagination and gold assisted the master craftsmen and artists in the completion of their sacred work, which is difficult to surpass. The colonials preferred to use their gold in their churches rather than pass it on to the ill-favored royal household far away in Lisbon. So the sacred images continue to radiate in their flowing gowns in front of the background of gold leaf as if in thanks to themselves. The source of Ouro Preto's gold became exhausted in around 1800 and further building activity gradually decreased. But the treasures created by human hand live on and are now the fabulous legacy of a truly golden past. <laughs>